Welcome back to another edition of Cardinal Sports on PSTV. This week, we dive into spring sports, take a look at some community events our athletes were involved with, and we get to see who will be going to the Totally Teammates Championships. Don't go anywhere. Cardinal Sports starts right now. Welcome back to Cardinal Sports, I'm Tim Verstandig. And I'm Brett Porter. On tonight's show, we leap into some of the spring sports you haven't seen much of yet, hear an announcement from our athletic director, Mike Howard, learn a little bit about a basketball player, and more. To start us off, let's take a look at the beginning of baseball season. The Cardinals played a pair of home game openers in a doubleheader on Friday the 14th against the Cortland Red Dragons. The Cardinals didn't put up a lot stat-wise, but Junior DeLand was able to hit a double, score a run, and steal a base. Patrick Bryant's good eye got him two walks off of Cortland's pitcher, Jesse Winters. In the first game, Cardinals pitcher Matt Fox struck out two batters. In the second game, Noah Clark, Mike Onifrak, and Santino Icaza all hit singles. The Plattsburgh team suffered two straight losses that day, dropping their record to 5-14 and overall and 0-8 and in the league. Hopefully our Cardinals look to improve for the remainder of the season. How about another sport we haven't seen much of yet this season? Track. How about it, Tim? The track meets aren't hosted by Plattsburgh, but luckily this time we have some photos for you. On Sunday, April 9th, both the men's and women's track and field teams traveled to Middlebury, Vermont to compete in the Panther Spring Invitational. From the men's team, junior Saban Ayub won the 400-meter hurdles, while Zach Grandy, a senior, was second in the race. In the 400-meter dash, Kyle Jones placed in fourth. In mid-distance, senior Ethan Vinson took second place in both the 800 and the 1500-meter run. The women's team placed third in the Invitational, collecting 78 total points. In the 1,500-meter run, Stephanie Boucher took second place. And in sprints, Elizabeth Plimpton took second in the 100-meter, and freshman Claire Desheus took second in the 400-meter dash. Overall, it was a great effort from both the Plattsburgh men and women track and field teams. And now on Cardinal Sports, an important message from our very own athletic director, Mike Howard. Listen up, because this is some exciting news we have for you. This is certainly an historic day for SUNY Plattsburgh and Cardinal Athletics. I am pleased to announce that we will be adding women's lacrosse as our 18th sport in the Cardinal lineup. Our hope is to begin a national search this spring for a head coach who will begin working with us immediately throughout the next academic year to begin recruiting and building a program. We anticipate being prepared to begin collegiate play the following year and will be participating as a full member of the SUNYAC Athletic Conference and Women's Lacrosse beginning in 2018-19. I am beyond thrilled to be making this announcement today. The addition of Women's Lacrosse has been a point of discussion for many years on the Plattsburgh campus and was certainly high on my list of priorities when I accepted the position as Director of Athletics here last summer. The program complements all of our existing programs extremely well and positions us well as we look to expand our recruiting footprint throughout the entire Northeast. The sport of lacrosse is quickly becoming one of the fastest growing sports on the high school level, and I am hopeful that this program, similar to all of our other Cardinal athletic programs, will play a key leadership role in the continued growth of the game at the youth and high school level in the Plattsburgh region. It also provides a tremendous opportunity for young women who are looking seriously at SUNY Plattsburgh and are passionate about continuing the sport that they love. This announcement comes on the heels of the celebration Sunday honoring our women's hockey team's fourth straight NCAA championship. It also comes during a year in which we have seen tremendous success with our men's hockey team winning its 21st SUNYAC championship. All Americans in track and field as well as both of our hockey programs and multiple all-conference selections across the board in all our fall and winter programs. 
I think it's great that Plattsburgh is introducing a women's lacrosse team. You know, we have the men's lacrosse team, so I think it's a great compliment. A lot of students have been waiting a long time for this, and I think it's great that we have it, and that we're starting it. Lacrosse is such a popular sport now, and a lot of girls want to play lacrosse, so Plattsburgh introducing lacrosse will make more people want to come here. So tell me, Tim, how do you feel about Plattsburgh State adding women's lacrosse to its already impressive group of sports? Well, I think it's just, I think it's just spectacular. Uh, I think it's awesome, and I, I am very excited for the expansion. I'm very excited to go see some games, and I, I hope you will join me. Oh, yeah. And, well, coming up next, we have an interview with a player from the men's basketball team. Don't touch those remotes. Cardinal Sports will be right back here on PSTV. And now on PSTV, even though basketball season is over, our very own live basketball anchor, Nick Demersion, was able to interview a player. Let's send it to Nick and check it out. Hello, I'm Nick Demersion. I'm here with Plattsburgh State point guard Elijah Bryant. Are there any parts of your game do you think that you can improve on next season? Well, I feel like I have to be more in shape this year. So, because I feel like I'm going to get much more minutes now that Zach is not uh, playing next year. So, coming back in shape and being more defensively ready. Um, which player on the team is the most fun to play with on the most court? Fun. Eric Matt. Catches every alley hoop. He leaks out. He dunks the ball on anybody. So, he's real fun to play with. Your, with your style, who do you base it off of in the NBA? I try to base it off Isaiah Thomas, the shooter, because we're both short, we can shoot. Both lefties. both lefties, so yeah. I try to idolize him. Um, is he your favorite player of all time, or just who you base it off of? Just who I base it off of. Who's your favorite player of all Kobe. time? Kobe. Yeah, if I was 6'5", that's what I would model my game after. I would just love his footwork, how he plays the post, how he can shoot, and just lead the team. So that's who I would model the team. Coach Curl, one of the most passionate coaches that you'll ever see. How fun is it playing for a coach like him? It's fun playing with Coach Curl because he he can relate to us. Like he talks to us, he comes in the locker room, he gets to know us personally. So it's just fun to be around him. And he works out like whenever we're lifting, he'll do ten pull-ups. Like he's just active and stuff like that. So what's your favorite memory with Coach Curl? Him doing the push-ups when I was—I mean, the pull-ups when I was when I came for my recruiting visit. I think he did like 30 in a row. Was there and, any reason for him to do it, or was he just trying to show off? <laughs> I think both. I think both. But he—he he never limits himself. So, someone who always seemed to have success when he played in Memorial Hall, uh, number 11, Brian Sertino for Oswego. He's finally graduating Oswego. Does that—is there a sigh of relief when a player like him is finally? You don't have to worry about him anymore. It is, because he was a great player, and every time he played us, he did very good. I don't know why, he must love Memorial or something, but yeah, uh, him not being here is a sign of relief. What do you feel was the difference in the team's success this season as opposed to last season? Well, last season, we had uh, leadership with Kyle, Xavier, and Edward, Edward. and uh, this year, we didn't have that much leadership on the court. Uh, because Owen and Magic was our captains, but they didn't really play that much this year. So leadership on the court was a huge difference. Were there any players that uh, surprised you with their play this season? Uh, there was two players, specifically uh, Ian Howard and Chris Middleton. Ian, he's not that tall, he's 6'2", but he's an offensive rebounding machine. We call him the OR. And Chris Middleton, he could play almost every position. So I feel like this year they both stepped up and we wasn't expecting that much from them and I feel like they played a huge role. Who do you expect to have a pretty good season next year? Next year I expect Isaiah Hill to have a, a breakout season. Uh, he's 6'8", he's big, he's, he can shoot, he can pass and he can finish. So this year it was more like a confidence builder and I feel like he got his confidence now. He's also one of the fan favorites whenever he's on the court it seems like yeah, every, everyone's hyped up. Yeah, everybody screams his name, everything. Everybody wants him to uh, do good. So, um, Owen Mitchell had one of the 
a surprise season. He was one of your best three-point shooters all year long, especially in the conference. He was one of the best. Um, did that surprise you, or did it just came out of nowhere? Uh, no, Owen hits every three in practice, so I expected him to hit every three in the game. And when he came in, that's what he did. So. At this point, next season, after the season's done, what do you want to be remembered as, as your, after your final game being played? Uh, I want to be remembered as a winner and a champion. Uh, my goal here, coming here, was to win a championship. So if I could be remembered as a winner and a champion, that would be my goal. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, coming and joining thank us you. today. And that will do it for this segment. Back to you guys in the studio, Tim and Brett. Thank you, Nick. I think it's awesome how we can still hear from the players during their offseason. That's right, Tim. It's nice to still be updated. Don't go anywhere. Next on PSTV, we have a couple community events that the athletes were involved in. Now on PSTV, we get to take a look at our very own Cardinal athletes getting involved in the community. Let's start with the Women's Hockey Parade, a celebration for the four-time national champions. Check it out. The parade wasn't the only community event our athletes have been involved in recently. That's right, Tim. Recently, our campus hosted a Relay for Life event. Let's take a look at all the athletes and others who went out to support this wonderful event. because a lot of our teammates are affected by cancer and uh, a lot of our family members too. Um, we get involved with Relay for Life because we think it's a great community service event. Um, it really brings the school together and it's just a very important cause to everyone. Um, well, cancer has affected me personally. Uh, my aunt had it, my grandmother had it. And so I feel like just as a way that I can kind of give back because I can raise money and I can help support other people who are going through the same thing that I went through. So that's why I'm here. 
Yeah, uh, same thing with me. Um, basically, cancer affects all of us, family and friends on my part too. And uh, it's just really good to see the campus come together as a community, just really get everything going together and just, you know, fundraising all for a good cause. And what's really cool is that, like a huge majority of clubs on campus are here too. Yeah. So it's just really fun to be a part of it as well, all the camaraderie. Because uh, it's for a good cause and um, that's pretty much really it. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's good to like show that our team cares and we just like want to get involved with everyone. It means a lot. Yeah. It definitely means a lot. A lot. Because like I said, we're, a lot of us are affected. So being able to raise money and be here and be involved um, is definitely a huge honor and it's really nice to be here. And especially representing like as like a team aspect, like we're all like we're a here family. For each other, yeah. So we're here for each other. Um, I think it's very important that our team comes together for this event because um, so many people are affected by this terrible disease. Well, like I said, since cancer is affecting me personally, it means a lot to see a lot of people, you know, whether they're friends or complete strangers, how we all bond together and how we all come together for one, you know, collective unit, as one collective unit against something that's, you know, swept our, not, not only the nation but the world. So it's really good to see how everyone has gotten behind it and really moving towards a better area. Yeah. yeah, no, my favorite part about this whole thing is that everybody comes together with their own ideas, their own fundraising yeah. abilities. Um, like the radio station out there was doing a Guitar Hero fundraiser. And, like, everybody's just raising money together, all for a good cause, and just everyone's coming together before. Yes, we usually do this every year. Yeah. We'll definitely be coming back. Yeah. Uh, yes, we do it annually. It's um, a great bonding experience and just a great event to kind of be a part of. So we try to do it every single year. Yes, unfortunately this will be, um, we're juniors, so we're getting up there. But yes, um, our team will continue to do this um, year after year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we came here start since Red Zone was founded like last year. Uh, last year was our first relay and we totally have intentions of continuing going on. Uh, we actually, uh, we started the, the thing where uh, we brought a whole bunch of inflatable pools last year, so then we doubled it this year, and we're bringing even bigger ones. And I, I feel like by the end, we're just gonna have like one huge relay pool party, and I think that that's my goal. That's my goal as a red zoner. <laughs> yeah, no, and um, for red zone, we come here every year. But we started last year, yeah. but it's just been awesome, especially it brings our club together closer because um, sometimes all we know of each other is just we go to the stands together, we yell a lot, but this like it really kind of brings us together as friends too. So we kind of get to know get to know each other a little bit more on a Friday night. Um, yes, this is my second year because I'm only a sophomore, and then this is Sam's second year as well. Yeah. But th we have like a new team this year. A lot of the girls aren't with us that was with us last year. So for pretty much all of our team, it's like their first time. But we plan on doing it every single year too that we're here, and to hopefully have them take charge and do it for the following years after we leave. Coming up next on Cardinal Sports, a fan favorite, totally teammates. Last time, women's hockey got a total of 15 points putting them in the lead for this season so far. Don't you want to see what team is up next? Don't go anywhere. You're watching PSTV. Welcome back to Cardinal Sports for our popular segment, Totally Teammates. Last time, women's hockey beat out track, receiving a total of 15 points. Now it's time for men's hockey to take a shot. Let's see if they can skate past for a win. This is Josh Davies. This is Charles Barber. We're on the men's hockey team. And we're ready to play Totally Teammates. You score a touchdown and you try and... Extra point? Yeah. Uh, it's worth three points in football. Uh, safe. Two, three points? Uh, you don't score a touchdown and you try a... Oh, field goal. Uh, it's... You do it in swimming. Breast stroke? Oh, a different one. Butterfly? The other one. Back crawl? Front crawl. Back something. Back stroke. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's an apple in hockey. Oh, uh, assist. I don't use my forehand, I use my backhand. Uh, you leave your feet when you hit somebody on this. Charging? It's a hit in hockey. Body check? I use two hands and... Stick handle? No, two hands in basketball. Oh, double dribble? Uh, it's less than a red card. Yellow card? I drop the ball in football. Oh, tackle? Oh, um... I want to say Butterfingers, that's not right at all. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> not bad though, fumble. Fumble. I thought he did very well, and he made me laugh when he said Butterfingers. You know, <laughs> that great smile kept me going. Wow. I just, You're I, quick, nine points is impressive. Thank you. Um, it was hard because I was distracted by your good looks. And uh, you persevered. And I was thinking about food, that's why I said <laughs> Butterfingers. <laughs>
Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins number 66. Uh, Crystal Tank. No, he used to play. Oh, Mario Lemieux. Yeah. Uh, mo has the most goals, number 99. Wayne Gretzky. Uh, um, no. <laughs> uh, maybe later. Quarterback for the Cowboys. Uh, Tony Romo. Yeah. Oh, I should. Um, <laughs> number 87. Sidney Crosby. Yeah. Uh, soccer player, like most famous soccer player. Christian Ronaldo. Or, Ren or Christian Ronaldo. I don't look for him last name. Ronaldo. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, he's a basketball player. I don't know anything about him. Someone passed. Steph Curry. No. Uh, <laughs> huge basketball player. Like can't shoot. But he's like the tallest guy. Skill Neal. Yeah. Uh, another basketball player. DW. <laughs> Dwayne Wade. Yeah. <laughs> That's um. Just try with it on. Oh, I've never heard of her. Uh, <laughs> I don't know which sports he plays. <laughs> uh, <I've never> <laughs> Very impressed that we had all the hockey guys. Not yeah. sure quite how we did that, no, but <laughs> we, you know, I don't know much about hockey, but all those other sports I thought I did really good on. Yeah, no. we definitely did well. Yeah, knew a lot, of, a lot about above athletes. average for sure. Mm -hmm. so just, just, just keep like it up. Looks, just keep it up. Uh, Mighty Ducks. Slap shot. Miracle. Yeah. Okay, drinking. I'm driving. <laughs> Arrested. Football. Invincible. Arrested. Mm -hmm. Football. Oh, I don't know. I'm not even, <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> pretending to know. Looks like we came out on top with 18 points and we're moving on to the championship round to face Winnetake. We might have a national championship, but we're going to have a totally teammates title. Make, Make sure, sure you check, check it out on Cardinal, Cardinal Sports. Sports. <laughs> it looks like the men's team will take on the women's team for the totally teammates championship title on our next episode. That's right. And now on Cardinal Sports, our segment that airs every week with help from the wonderful sports information department, we bring to you the Cardinal Spotlight. This week in the spotlight, we have Ryan Callahan from the men's lacrosse team and Ray Flynn from the men's baseball team. We got to learn more about these two players, like why they chose to come to SUNY Plattsburgh, and if they could play another sport, what would it be? Ryan said he chose Plattsburgh mainly because of the lacrosse program, and Ray said he would play football if he could play another sport. So tell me, Brett, why did you choose to become a Cardinal? Well, Tim, uh, to be honest, it's very uh, close to home for me. Uh, I am a mama's boy through and through. Mom, if you're watching, just want to know your son loves you. Uh, Tim, what about you? Why did you choose Plattsburgh State? Well, I chose Plattsburgh. Uh, good facilities, good size, uh, great classes, good programs, and of course, excellent sports. Excellent sports, excellent Tim. Excellent sports. And uh, for the whole story, visit our school's athletic website, GoCardinalSports.com. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Cardinal Sports. Our next episode will be a special live edition with the Totally Teammates Championship game and more sports coverage, so make sure you check it out. Join us next time. Good night, Cardinal Country.